another Shutter Sunday. This is Nick. This is Jamie. This week we are going to go over an older-ish movie, mm -hmm. but we just found out it was on Shutter. I think we kind of forgot about that because we saw some previews <laughs> in theater. We were looking it up, and uh, that would be the 2008 The Strangers, mm -hmm. directed by Brian Patino, starring Liv Tyler as Kristen and Scott Speedman as James. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure people know about this movie, so we don't have to go like crazy in depth about this, mm -hmm. but it's like that thriller, psychological, mystery kind of deal. Yeah. First movie in a little while we've done that actually had a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. It got about $52 million at the box office with a weird four out of five skull rating <laughs> on Shutter. This doesn't seem to change. <laughs> the Rotten Tomatoes. Any idea where these numbers are? I feel like the audience is definitely higher than the critics. It is not. Really? It is lower by one point. Oh, okay. It's so not pretty, that much then. They're pretty like neck and neck with each other. So the critics had that at a 49. Oh, my God. And the audience at a 48. I can't believe this has such bad ratings, honestly. It wasn't really... I guess maybe for liked. 2008, maybe it wasn't that well received. Well, I feel that like mid two thousands, that mid to late two thousands, had a a lot of just kind of bad horror mm -hmm. out there. It was before we got to that new age of elevated horror and you know Blumhouse mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And it was at that very tail end of all the slashers. You know, those were kind of dying out in the nineties. We had a little bit of Scream, but Scream even died down. And that's when we started to get some sort of remake stuff. That's when we got you know the Texas Chainsaw remake. Yep. We got you know, Friday the 13th remake, a Nightmare on Elm Street remake came back in like 2010 or something mm -hmm. like that. So that, that mid to late 2000s was a weird, weird couple of years for horror. But why don't you just kind of give a quick synopsis of The Strangers for everyone that maybe doesn't know. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to spoil some stuff. So if you haven't seen yeah. it, go check it out before we get into this. But mm -hmm. I can't imagine you have a lot to say for a synopsis. <laughs> so I had, and maybe it's because I've seen this movie more. And so I knew more in depth of how to write a better synopsis for it. But I have the short version, the long version. Should I just do the short version? Do whichever you want. <laughs> so the short version I thought was too boring. Three masked strangers terrorize a couple at their friend's vacation home throughout the night until sunrise. It's pretty much the whole basis. That's obviously. the whole movie. <laughs> that's, that's to the point. That's the movie right there. <laughs> I just put a little bit more detail in my other synopsis, but you get the gist of yeah. it. Yeah. So, I mean, I know how you feel about this movie. You yeah. really enjoy this movie. I do. So why don't you kick us off for the good? What was the good in this movie for you? I really enjoy the soundtrack in this movie. I feel like a big part of this that made it so unsettling and uncomfortable was the record playing different songs that they had in the background when the different strangers would appear in the house. Some of the different shots that they had as well when Kristen is in the kitchen kind of with her back to the sink and then in the background you can see the, the mass stranger guy. kind of the bag like head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of hidden like behind the wall. And of course as soon as she turns around he's gone. But I just really in it's tough with horror movies because I feel like a lot of the movies I do on this I always say that I do enjoy. But with this, I feel like it's since it's more of a realistic scenario that this could happen is just what really gets me and makes me actually scared watching this. Yeah. Anything, any other good for you or that's, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Most good. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. That kind of bleeds into some of my negative. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't, I, I enjoyed the songs that were played mm -hmm. during this movie. Right. I'll <laughs> talk about the bad portion of the soundtrack mm -hmm. when we get to the bad. Uh, I like the, the setting of it. Yes. It's a, you know, simple kind of thing, mm -hmm. but it's a fun house. It's, it's, you know, in the middle of nowhere. You don't really, I don't know if they really tell us where. I feel like they never know, really. state wise or city really or whatever. Say, so yeah. it's just kind of there. I like the the villains. I like their different masks. I thought I they were too. different enough where you could tell them apart without, because that's one of my biggest, you know, bugaboos. <laughs> I hate when characters are just so simple, but they are so similar. So you can't, you can't differentiate them. Right. This one does a good job of like, mm -hmm. okay, well, there's the doll face, there's the bag head, and mm -hmm. then the, the other, other you know, girl, the other face. girl stranger. And I like that they don't do an actual like face reveal of them. Towards the end of the film, they kind of do shots of them riding in the truck. You I don't see like the back that of their at heads. all. You don't like Hate that, it. Hate really? It. If you're gonna be masked, just stay masked. But I feel like that's the th they don't show their actual faces though. You don't see what their faces look like. I'm glad. I wouldn't want I'm, to. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad. About I'd rather that them too. just have not shown them taking anything off. At all. But yeah. yeah. I I did like the Mama Tried, that part of the soundtrack. That one is really good. That's a good one. And I'll finish it off with 
my last good point, and it will bleed right into my first negative, is the simplicity of this. I like that it's simple. Negatives. It is way too goddamn simple. I know that's, you know, I'm contradicting you, myself. I would think you would like that aspect I, of it. Yeah, I know that I'm contradicting myself saying it's, it's, it's that fine line mm-hmm. of, like, I like the simplicity of it, but it's just too simple. It seems like it was more of a short movie idea it was, versus... It was a short movie, too. It was only like an hour and a half, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then you look at something like, say, 1408. Okay. With John Cusack, where it's simple, mm-hmm. it's simply him in in this hotel room, basic. But there's a lot of like little stages throughout that movie that keep it and, and progress it from one beat to another. Whereas this one, it's like it's just simple. It's just there. It's a it's an invasion movie, mm-hmm. uh, kind of purgy a little bit, and it 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 tries to be slashery, but it's not, and then it's. I don't know. It, it was just a little... It needed to step it up a little bit more in mm-hmm. the storyline. So I like simple. This is too simple. Uh, some of my other bads, and these are... I have a lot of very nitpicky things with this. <laughs> and I don't... I, I know only with, had a couple. I know with horror, you can nitpick tenfold. You can find a billion things with a, a movie that's wrong if you want to. Mm-hmm. However... I don't tend to do that until they start to like really pile up. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just, whether it's intentionally or not, I'm looking for them now. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of like little nitpicky things that I have in my bad category that just didn't work for me. And I'll go through them a little bit quicker, but I did not like the blatant Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff of the based on true events, (laughs) not based on true events at all. I looked Don't it up. Even it's put actually it. not. At no, all. it's just a home invasion <laughs> Which thing. Which is disappointing because I feel like that's what gives it that more like mm, factor. No, and, so, and it's not even based on So true this movie events. starts out by but lying it could, to me. It could me. be based on a true event. Sure. <laughs> Every movie for the most part could be based off true right. events because it's not strictly based on, you know, an actual story. Mm-hmm. Based on true events just means that like something may have happened and we tweaked it a lot, yeah. much like Texas Chainsaw. I think it was a similar story as what they based it off of, but it wasn't sure. verbatim and, exactly what And happened. that's one of my things with Texas Chainsaw Massacre as well. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't like the whole tricking and lying to me that this is based off a true event it's not it's Mm -hmm. you just picked a couple things and whatever Mm -hmm. i didn't like that um mike glenn from yes it's always sunny yeah hate that storyline there's no point in having him in this movie other than they needed somebody to kill so that was confusing for me at first because i was under the impression that it was his like brother's house they were staying at, but it was his best friend's. But I, I, now that you say that, I feel like it didn't really need to be put into it. But it made sense as to why he came to the house and everything. He made yeah. a phone call. He let him know he was there. Yes. The proposal went bad. But it he has, had to show up. Yeah, yeah. Well, it I makes sense like, that he showed up, but there was no yeah. point in him. Nothing in the story would have changed if Mike was out of the picture. I think they just wanted to add that. Like, probably they were realizing there was only going to be two kills in this movie they needed to add something else spoiler maybe it would have only been one <laughs> right. but i i actually liked that part i mean yeah you needed like a kill mm-hmm. but if you need mike to be killed or you need a mm-hmm. kill maybe implement it better in the story i think they just wanted to give have... it that like wow factor for how the kill happened which is fine yeah but make Mike more integral to the story because mm-hmm. it was he was it was completely unnecessary. Yeah, um, I didn't like that we they never explained or said anything about who Tamara is. Is Tamara here? So, I just that that was something that I thought was gonna pay off, mm-hmm. but it just didn't. So I was like, eh, I kind of disappointing a little bit. Went down the rabbit hole of Reddit searching for what that was as well, who Tamara was or why they asked that. And apparently why they asked that was to see if someone answered the door to see if someone was home. So Tamara was never, it was just to see if someone would answer the door to see if but they were home. You could have done something like they could have opened the door and you could have just had her like walk away cre- like creepily. You didn't have to ask, like I, I was just expecting right. payoff and it mm-hmm. wasn't there. Shame on me. Um, <laughs> the doll face girl when she was standing outside and he's like, oh, she looks like a ghost. 
It's just a person. Like it's not. It's not a ghost. It's just like, a person with a mask. Like, it's creepy. Kind of looks weird. He's like, she'll leave after a while. Like this is the second time <laughs> she's came knocking. It. And mind you, she had. Uh, Kristen had said earlier. She was like, it's like four in the morning. Who's knocking? If someone's knocking on my fucking door at four in not the morning, answering. I'm not answering. No, no. <laughs> uh, the whole truck scene when he's like pulling out, and he's like, oh, actually, wait, just get out of the car. Like, uh, again. Horror movie, you have to look past mm-hmm. stuff, but exactly. once when there's a lot of stuff, that's when yeah. I start creating my lists, mm-hmm. and that made the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, what other ones? I'm going to save that one for later because mm-hmm. it's going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't like that the the kids at the very end when they walked in and saw the dead bodies had like no emotion. Yeah, just weird. Like yeah. again, something that uh, maybe if we showed them much earlier a couple times mm-hmm. and showed that they were like just creepy little kids like yeah. it would make a little bit more sense but i was expecting screams right. chaos yeah. whatever uh jump scares mm-hmm. when done correctly they're efficient mm-hmm. when shoehorned in there i find them irritating mm-hmm. got a lot of those in this one two more the little things these are like much little these are very little things that annoy you have a me. lot more dislikes than yeah, you have for but the these lights. are but again these are all like very little things yeah. right so little things the ice cream on the table. The guy was eating the ice cream mm-hmm. in the beginning, mm-hmm. and it was there the entire movie. Mm-hmm. It would have melted. It was just frozen ice cream <laughs> the entire time. I would have never picked up on that. Uh, I would have noticed that, honestly. The candles, again, on the table, never went out. You think they would have gone out? Yes, or they would have changed in in, Fair. in height. Yeah. Uh, but yes, they definitely would have gone out because people were coming in and out of the house the whole time. Mm-hmm. They would have burnt out at some point. Yeah. The record player, like skipping and yeah. going over and over again, mm-hmm. it wouldn't. A record player is not going to do that. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> oh, that's all those. Uh, so the one thing that's really going to piss people off, I hate the line "You are home," because you are home. Lazy. Lazy. Very lazy. It's just you even said too, and I understand it does seem lazy, but you said it's such a simple storyline and it's such a simple line mm-hmm. that I feel like it just sticks. It doesn't have to be for a movie to be scary and to be. To make an impact on you, I feel like it doesn't have to have this big, I- extravagant ending to make you feel, like, uncomfortable or, like, unsettled. Fair. I, I know it's it's divisive. I mm-hmm. think people love it and that people hate it. Right. And for me, it was just... <laughs> Obviously, the, the reviews weren't that great, I was so. just I was just waiting for more at the end, mm-hmm. and then just the, why'd you do this? Eh, you were home. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, come on. They screenwriter phoned it in. He was done. He was like, you know what? I We stretched, you know, 60 pages of script mm-hmm. into an hour and a half. I got nothing left. Like, I don't know. So what were some bad things that you, you noted? Because even with the movie you enjoy, you can still... Oh, of course. You know, dive into it. Yeah. One thing for me is that... I feel like this was the main part of it that kind of just pissed me off throughout the movie. And I get it. It's a horror movie. You have to have something in there to make you go along with it, you know? But they could have gotten out of this shit so many opportunities. Yeah. First of all... Drive. Just drive. The, the first time after she knocks on the door, goes back inside, Kristen's real stressed out. James is like, I'll go get you cigarettes. But why would you leave at the first place? Some random ass person's knocking on your door, and then you want to leave in the middle of the night, middle of nowhere. He's like, yeah, the store's like not anywhere near here, so it's going to be a while. She calls him once they come banging on the door to get into the house ultimately. And he's like, all right, I'll be there soon. <laughs> like, she had to have called him at this point, like, probably 25 minutes ago. Like, how are you not rushing home with your proposed fiancé mm-hmm. saying that someone broke into the house? And yeah, she said no, scared. fucker. <laughs> Was that true? But I just feel like they had so many opportunities where they could have gotten away. But the, the same thing I said, they should have just sat and waited in one corner of the house where they're backed up to the wall with the big shotgun and they just could have took them all out. They could have waited till daylight. Mm-hmm. till the daytime that's all they had to do that was and you just kind of reminded me of mm-hmm. a couple more things i did mm-hmm. not like um so when they did finally hold up with the shotgun yep. and they're like oh we'll just wait until the cops come no one called the cops no why one. would they show up right and also it's, i think it was when she called on the radio yeah oh that was maybe but either mm-hmm. way nobody called the cops no. and it's 4 a.m dead silent Nobody heard. It's probably like six at this yeah, point. <laughs> nobody heard shotguns being shot, glass being broken, cars being smashed, a truck driving. No neighbor. No. I think that's what because it is mentioned. a neighborhood. So like because when yeah. you see them driving out in the morning, there's houses, right. but nobody. It heard is weird or saw. too. Yeah. And then with Mike again when he mm-hmm. shows up to the house mm-hmm. and he sees just like <laughs> the door open, the car smashed. He's like, 
he's calling out for their names, and then he walks into the house, and then he stops calling their names. Yeah, and it's then just like, gets blasted in the face. If I saw like, and this was his like vacation home or whatever too, so I was like, damn, my door's yeah. busted open. I'm like, going to my car and I'm just gonna call the cops. That too, yeah. So like, I'm mm-hmm. not going into the house. Mm-hmm. No chance. I don't care. I did want to bring up one thing though. You said about the record skipping. I actually really liked that part with the record skipping because. The whole time I was trying to decipher what it was saying, and it says Quicksilver Girl. I guess that was the full song it was saying. But I always thought it was saying, gonna get you. And I was like, that's kind of creepy. And then there's another part in the song. I should have added this in the likes before. There's another song that they had played where some of the lyrics in the song are playing. And it's like, are you gonna go outside or something's waiting outside or something like that. So I just think it's fun how they like tie in the music to like with what's happening in the different yeah. scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so top moment. What was like the best moment of this movie for you? What was like the selling point? You know what I'm gonna say? Cause even when I first saw this movie, I literally was like, you were home. That one. Yeah, well, pretty much. It, it is, that's what, that's what just makes this movie so good. Cause even like growing up when I was younger, I've always been a really, paranoid anxious person but growing up home invasions just always terrified me for some reason hills have eyes kind of movies texas chainsaw dead end any of this kind of weird creepy stuff being in the middle of nowhere and someone watching you stalking you has just always freaked me out and just that's exactly how it would happen too because the wrong place the wrong time yeah. and i just feel like that's just such a plausible thing that could occur to someone and it's just it's scary yeah. And it's unsettling. I know you didn't yeah. like it. Uh, but... Top moment for me uh-huh. um, when the stranger was in the kitchen in the background. Yee, that, that was scary was, too. That, that was, was good, good too. That, and that got me. Do a lot. Do a bunch of those versus the jump scares. Yeah. If you replace five of the jump scares mm-hmm. with more of those, like, oh, he's there. Yeah. Like, then that would have kind of made it a little mm-hmm. bit more. Uh, best death and kill. There was really only two. There really so, wasn't much, so I feel like yeah, I kind of just... highlighted both of them. I mean, the one that I picked was Mike's death, obviously, yeah. because... Shock under the face. Yeah, and it was pretty... Just thinking, because um, James was Mike's best friend, and he was like, I just killed my best friend, and then they're like, don't look, don't look, and then they, like, crawl, like, around his dead body, and, like, that's right just so. so traumatizing, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, Mike was mm-hmm. the best death and kill. Yeah. There was only mm-hmm. only two kills because, again, jump scare at the end. She wasn't dead. Uh, fear and beer rating. So fear rating, on a scale of one to five, how scary was this movie for you? I gave this a 3.5. 3.5, all right. Yes. Uh, 2.5 for okay. me. Okay. It's not the scariest thing in the world. It's more unsettling than scary. Yeah. You get points for that. Mm -hmm. You get some points for the jump scares, even though they're not, you know, they're not really used effectively, but Mm -hmm. they still get you. Mm -hmm. Uh, The beer rating one through five on how good this movie is. I gave this a four. A four. I did. All right. Same, same for shutter. A four. (laughs) Um, ah, man, I'm just going to stick with my same as my fear rating, the two and a half. Okay. I don't want to give it a three, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think it's it's lower than I don't think it's a full on two. Right. So I, I think it's right in the middle. It's a fine movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can turn it on and, and not think, but that's what aggravates me. I think it. I think this movie really aggravates me because it was very close to something I would very much enjoy, mm-hmm. and it just just didn't finish. It didn't cross the finish line for me. Mm-hmm. It was. It had all the makings to be something that I would love to like rewatch and turn back on. Mm-hmm. And it just missed the mark on just taking the easy way out and being a little lazy with you the writing, You kind of did I think. think it was going to have a bigger payoff than what it did. I was hoping because right. there's always, and this, it's been a long time since I rewatched this movie, mm-hmm. and with the new trilogy coming out, the hype on The Strangers is, is for real, and people love this stuff, and people love this movie, and I was like, man, I don't really remember, I don't really remember it, and you know what, in 10 years, when I watch this movie again, I probably will be thinking the same thing, I don't really <laughs> remember this movie, and that's not a good thing, mm-hmm. but, all right, well, that is all for Shutter Sundays, we will hopefully be back next week. Yes. Where we got some new releases on Shutter this week, so we're gonna we dive do. into those. So Exciting. until next time, this is Nick. And this is Jamie. See ya.